Well, guys, welcome to my shop. You're about to see the first. See the first. I'm throwing in the towel on this project. I'm not going to finish it. It uh, certainly didn't turn out anywhere like I wanted. I may change my mind. I don't know, but uh, you you'll see why when we get going. It. Uh, just didn't turn out like I wanted, and I'm not going to be happy with it. And even though I fix it or whatever, I still won't be happy with it. So there's no sense in wasting any time or my time. So I'm showing this anyway, just to show you that things happen to everybody. You know, it's not just you, or, you know, or anybody else. You know, I have blow ups and screw ups too, and this this is a screw up. is a very uh, well, I, you know, I don't know if I want to call it a stupid mistake or not, but it was something I, I should have thought of, and you, you're going to see why when we get to going. So, I mean, there it is, what's left of it. I can still put it back on and do something with it. I'm, I may sleep on it and pick up on it tomorrow. If I do, I'll let you know. We'll see you. But what I did is I took uh, an old 2 by 6 and uh, cut it into six inch pieces and run it through the planer and glue them together to make me a, a plug so I can turn it for a plug. Now I want to thank Total Boat. Not only do they provide a real good epoxy, but they also gave me a mold here. So this is going to be turned where it fits into here, like so, something like that anyway. And uh, it's actually, some people call it a plug. Some people call it a resin saver. This is actually a plug utility piece because this, the way I turn this and the way I use it is going to be an integral part of this bowl. So you just have to stay tuned. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put a face plate on it, get it on the lathe, and get it down to size. I'm going to, I'm going to come up here. This is going to be my top. So what I'll do is use this face plate right here, right there. And I'll get that on and we'll take some measurements and we'll get her rolling. Okay, I'm going to get this plug over here. Let's see if I can't get it in the background. There you are. I'm going to whittle that plug down so it fits inside here. Now, I found about the best way I know to do this, these tools right here, they're there for measuring inside diameter or something. And you can buy them like, all. Oh, I'm sure you can buy them on eBay, Amazon, but they are handy as all get out. No name for them that I know of. Uh, I'm sure some of you metal working guys do, but they're, they're sort of neat. What you do is you you know you put it inside. They're sort of spring loaded, and then that comes out you know whatever it is, and then you lock it in place, and then you come back here and you use a caliber to measure it, and that'll be what you do. So let me show you how that works here, real quick. So we're gonna bring them back in, lock them lock them in. Now this is this is gonna be the bottom, so I'm gonna bring it in here. And uh, pull it out all the way to the bottom, like that, right there. And you know, I get my big old hands in here. And up here I'll lock this in place, pull it out like that. And this, as you can see now. Here, that's going to be my diameter at the bottom for doing this, you know. Okay, so let me get my beaver and get this handy. I've already whirled it up, it whirls up pretty good. So I'm just going to do the top and the bottom, and then I'm going to hollow the center. And you'll see where I'm going later, so just bear with me. It's harder to explain than show. So let me get this situated right here where you can see it real good. Uh, I do need a tool wrench, I think. Find one. No, I got one. Ah, uh, there you go. Reliable.
work. I got my plug turned. I guess you can call it a plug. It's going to be more of a, a fixture because it's going to have a use other than just displacing resin. It's going to serve two purposes, that being an important one. What I'm going to do now is just drill holes. See these lines I put in here? I'm going to drill holes in these all the way around and then the same thing in the bottom. So let me get that done and then I'll get that cleaned up and we'll seal it. I'm going to leave the, the uh, face plate on it. You know, worst case scenario, like I you know, cut it off or put it in lacquer finger or something. Because, uh, you know, it's going to need it to keep it from floating up. Anyway, or some kind of weight. It's going to, it's going to go in here like that. See, it fits quite well. So, let's get some of these holes drilled. Let's see what they're going to look like. I'm going to start on this back in here. Perfect. All right. So what I'm going to do is just drill a lot of holes. Right in here. And I didn't know rhyme or reason. how quick something can happen. I think I'm going to hold it over here from now on. Alright. Back out here again. I gave you all a quick lesson on how to drill a hole in your thumb. So anyway, here's what I'm doing. Maybe a hair brain idea. I've used it before and it works. But this is uh, this is fishing line. Pretty dang thin stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here. You don't know how much you use your thumb until you don't have your thumb.
But anyway, here's the deal. I, did, I really just wanted to try this technique. You know, we had this place by the house that was just swarming with red walls. Last year was really bad, and I killed, killed most of them. This year they sort of came back. So uh, the way I got these guys is I used a vacuum cleaner with a long uh, you know, wand on it. But they weren't there this year, so I only got like 20 something. Maybe that would be enough. But here's the idea. These, uh, I'm going to put them on here like this, see? Or wherever they, they hang. Here's it right there, like that. And I'm going to use tweezers, I think. I don't, I don't much believe these bad boys can still sting you, but. They can sting you, they'll get me. So the idea is to put a piece of a little bit of glue on. Maybe. Come on, glue. There you go. Now, try to stick them in somewhere. Right there. Well, I'm pretty much ready to go. I've got, uh, I've got all my lost, all the glue gone and stuff like that. And they seem to be, yep, that one didn't do so good, did it? You can't do that to me. Hold on, man, I've got to put you back on. Just have a sucker, and we're going to get some glue. Okay. That ought to fix him. Anyway. What I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted is a uh, failure. Because I've got, I've got this ready to go now. And uh, who knows what it's going to look like. What I'm thinking is when I put in a pressure pot, it may collapse all these guys, you know. Look at them stingers sticking out. Ooh, wait. That guy's upside down. He's going to have to stay that way. So anyway, uh, I think total boat for the mold. I've already got, I took the 47 paste and put it in there and smeared it around. I used the wrong type of uh, earth in it, so it doesn't do its job, but it does a good job with this. So anyway, when we're ready to go. This ought to fit right in there, just like I planned. Okay, this is a total boat thick set. It's a slow setting, and you mix it three to one. So I'm going to pour 12 ounces of this in here, and then I'm going to pour uh, four, four ounces of hardener. The 12 and then four, that ought, yeah, that ought to be a third, so that ought to work. Okay. I think it's all right. I'm anyway. I always put wax paper in the bottom of your pressure pot, just in case they leak, because they will stick. Looks good. So, now I only crank mine to 40 pounds. And I'll tell you why. Let me get this right here first and I'll tell you why. Because this, this is a Harbor Freight converted paint pressure pot and it's rated for 60 psi. But I don't trust it at 60 psi. So I do 40. I might could do 50. If you ever had one blow up on you, you'd know what I mean. So I reckon I'll see you tomorrow morning.
Well, we're getting one of them very rare August rains. It's been raining all morning. Grass has done turned back green. Well, I'm not going to be able to work on this much today, if any. But I, I just got to look at it, so I'm going to take it out of here. I have thought out a deer ham, and I've got to cut it up to make jerky. Lost about two or three pounds, but that's normal. Always going to lose some when it, it uh, compresses the bubbles and maybe the wasp. <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? In a minute, in just a minute, hopefully. There we go. Boy, it does. It does shrink. I may have to pour some more in there. Yeah, I guess not. Oh, look at there. Look at what's that. Well, oh, that's weird. I've never seen that happen before. Yeah. Must have got so hot it melted it. Looks like air bubbles down in there. Well, that's a new one on me. Dang. It's going to be hard to get this out of here now. Hmm. How deep is that? Yeah, I think that'll be all right. Oh, edges on that right there. It looks like my wasp there. Can't tell too much about them though. Oh, you can't see the fishing line. That's a good thing. You see this stuff? This shrunk that much? Or leak? One or the other? But it don't. Uh, wasn't hardly anything on the paper. Yeah, I'm going to get covered bold off. Call. Well, when they see this video, they may give me a call. Let's see, see how much my deer stalls. It ain't cold. That's enough. I may just go ahead and whittle on this a little bit. Well, I'm not sure this would even be worth messing with now. Because you see, if you look real close, like where that wasp is, how this tail is like a trail. Every one of them. It may be unique or something, I don't know, but that. That's sort of what caused this, this uh, white, that's, that's the, uh, the earth stuff coming out of that paste. It may not be too good for that anymore. But like right there, you can see it bubbling out its rear, sort of like the poop. I guess the pressure pot forced it out. It might have been better had I just let this uh, sit up naturally without putting it in the pressure pot. I really don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just turn a little bit of it. And, you know, it's got a place right here. It's all bubbled up right there. And it, it really it ruined the damn the cup it, or it was in, you know. That ain't a great big deal, but, but it did. Decided I'm not going to finish this. It's just uh, just didn't work out like I thought it would. There's a couple 
couple of them. There's a good part, and then there's a couple of bad parts. I really probably, all these wasps, I probably should have put them in the dehydrator and dried them out first because they had so much moisture in them that uh, the pressure from the pressure pot pushed their insides out. Uh, the other the other thing is, you know, it's just uh, the, the good part is that my fishing line thing really worked well. I mean, uh, hard as I look, I can't see a fishing line one in there, and and most of these walls are still suspended in there. I think it, I think it was a good idea. It just didn't work out. I, I could finish it, and I could probably salvage most of it, but I don't think it looked that good. And there's no sense in wasting all of my time and effort uh, because when I hollow this out, I'm, all of these places as you see here, they're they're going to be voids, and that would be more trouble than it'd be worth. So. You know, it was a good try. I'm, not, I'm pleased with this uh, Toro boat thick set epoxy and the fact that it really turns nice. But uh, for some reason, I don't know why it did all that. It could have it could have been, you know, what was in the walls or something. But you know, you saw how it messed up my bowl and everything. So that that's it. So. Hope you guys still like to watch me. I hate to admit a failure. I might use this for something you never know. Might put it out and make a target of it with it. So there you are. Uh, subscribe, give me a like, and and call your mama. I ain't gonna be taking no pictures of this and putting it on the end. Okay. Bye.